Hello and welcome to the second edition of Linux How To's. Uh, this week we're going to learn how you can connect to your Linux desktop remotely from any other computer connected to the internet. Um, there are lots of proprietary programs that claim to be able to do this. Uh, for instance, there's gotomypc.com. If we go to the website here, we have a picture of this guy. Uh, he's looking pretty happy. He's got his uh, Windows PC back there, and he knows that um, he can connect to his Windows desktop from any other computer connected to the Internet, and uh, hence the smug look on his face. Uh, what unfortunately he doesn't realize is he's getting ripped off pretty much because uh, he's paying uh, $20 a month per computer uh, for just licensing the software and what he doesn't realize is that there are lots of free and open source alternatives uh, to services such as this that work just as well and just as securely if not better. This is very often the case with proprietary software. Users generally are not aware that there are free and open source alternatives uh, that are much cheaper and just as good. So anyway, the first thing you're going to need to be able to get your remote desktop started is either a static IP address from your internet service provider or a uh, dynamic do domain name from a, uh, from a service such as noip.com. Uh, with this service, you can uh, for free register a domain name and then download a service that runs on your computer and uploads your dynamic IP address to the no IP server so that as long as you're connected to the internet uh, you can uh, reach your PC by way of the domain name that you have registered. Uh, this is fairly easy to set up and they have a Linux client available so I'm not going to go into how to do this at this time. Now the first thing you're going to need is a VNC server. So uh, the VNC server I recommend is called Tight VNC, and we're just going to search for this on Scruggle here. And uh, we're going to go down to the second result here for downloads. And now all we have to do is scroll down and look for the Unix slash Linux client for the source code. And it's right here. We would download this simply by clicking on it and saving it to disk. I usually uh, store all my source tarballs in the directory slash user slash src and then I have a separate directory for each package. I've already downloaded uh, this package so I'm not going to uh, do it again right now. But uh, what we can do now is we can go to our terminal here and we're going to change directories to uh, the directory that we just downloaded our tarball into. In my case, it's uh, slash user slash src slash type vnc hyphen hyphen one one dot three dot nine. There we go. And now I'm going to um, I'm going to unzip or excuse me untar this tarball here. So uh, what we need to do is run the tar command with the hyphen x for extract j because this is a bzipped file. We can see this by the extension here and f for the file name which we can just say is wildcard bz2. There we go, now we have a new directory so we're just going to uh, change to that directory. Here we go. Um, now I'm not going to uh, actually build this package here because it actually takes uh, takes quite a few minutes to do. I'm just going to uh, quickly run you through the steps on how to do this. First you're going to have to run a program called x mkmf and what that is going to do is it's going to make a regular make file from the uh, imake file that is provided in the package. Uh, this is the uh, convention that most uh, most packages that use the X windowing system um, use. So then what you're going to need to do is you're going to make uh, capital W world and then when that is uh, done being made you're going to cd to the directory xvnc and here you have to build this separately so you're going to run dot slash configure and uh, run that and then when you're done with that you're just going to run make uh, this step is actually going to take the longest making xvnc so when you're done with that you change directories to the parent directory and then you're going to run a program here called uh, called vnc install there it is we run that by doing dot slash vnc install and then it's going to take two arguments. The first argument is the path to where you want to store the binary files. That would be slash user slash local slash bin 
And the second argument is the directory you want to store the manual to. That would be slash user slash local slash man. Uh, there you go. So then you have a VNC server installed. The final step to the VNC server is to run VNC pass WD, VNC password. And all this does is it's going to set the uh, password that you are going to use to access your VNC server. So you just put in your password and then you verify. And uh, we don't need to worry about the view only password right now. And then you're all set. Now, um, the next step is we're going to configure and start up our SSH server. So the first thing we're going to do is, is look at uh, the SSH configuration file. On my distribution, this is in slash etc slash SSH slash SSHD underscore config. All right, I'm just going to walk you through a couple of the important lines here. Now, I run my SSH server on a non-standard address. The reason I do that is because if I run it on the standard port of port 22, I have hundreds of people trying to hack into my SSH server every day, and that annoys me. So I uh, prefer to let listen on the non-standard port here of 44787. You can put a line like this in your configuration file if you want to do something similar. Uh, now, by default, SSH will allow any user that has an account on your computer to log in. Uh, generally, it's a better idea uh, just to allow certain users. So you can have an allow users line here, and it's just a space separated list of all the users that you want to allow on your computer. And the final option here that's, that I think is important, it's uh, permit root login. I prefer to keep this at no. Uh, I guess that one is uh, pretty much up to you. Okay, so on my distribution, to start the SSH server, uh, you simply run service sshd start. Uh, this should probably work for um, uh, Red Hat based distributions. If you're using Ubuntu, I know that you uh, have to run sudo slash etc slash inet init dot d slash ssh start. Uh, if you're running some other distributions, you might have to add an rc.d here or possibly a d at the end of ssh here. But anyway, if you refer to the documentation for your distribution, I'm sure that you can find out how to start uh, services including ssh. So uh, now that that's started, um, we can go about uh, pretending now that we are on a separate computer and we want to log in to uh, our regular computer. So to do that, we simply run SSH, the hyphen L switch, because we want to um, we want to tunnel the VNC traffic over SSH so it's encrypted. So we simply choose some random port here and hope that nothing else is listening on it. And here, usually we would put, if we were actually on, on a separate computer, we would put either the IP address or the domain name of the computer we want to connect to. Since I'm not actually on a different computer, I'm just going to connect to localhost. But this is not generally what you would put in. And finally, you have to put the address that your VNC server is, list is listening on, uh, the port that is. And the ports always start with 5-9, and then are numbered sequentially from, from 0. So uh, let's just choose um, 5903 for just illustrative purposes. And now since I listen on a non-standard SSH port, we have to put that in with the hyphen P switch. That would be 44787. And then we want to connect to uh, localhost again. This localhost is just because I'm actually on the same computer I'm connecting to. Generally, this would be the domain name or the IP address of the remote PC. Okay, then we put in our password. This is the regular system password, not the VNC password. Oops, and I did not type that incorrectly. Let's try again. There we go. Okay, now we have to start a VNC server on the remote connection. So we're going to do uh, VNC server hyphen uh, geometry. I only need the geometry so it can show up in the YouTube video. You actually don't need to uh, put this step in. And then we want to make this uh, the th third uh, VNC server. We know we need to make it three because we have zero three as the last two digits. Whoopsies, zero three as the last two digits of our of our um, of our VNC port up here. So there we go. Now we have this running. 
So now we can open up uh, another terminal and now we can run uh, VNC viewer on localhost uh, two colons because we want to put the port in 10101 that's the port we chose to bind to now this localhost is actually going to be localhost even if you're on um, a remote computer so then we just put in our VNC password like so and there we have it we have a uh, new desktop here that uh, that uh, we can we can access from from any other computer